Okay. There we go. Uh, good afternoon. Here we are at our wellness gathering, and this is uh, series four. And we're continuing to take ownership of our health and well being, and we're going to concentrate on mindset. And this is with a th through the principles of core alignment. And I'm going to welcome again Lynn Hilderman, the core specialist in core alignment and clearing coaching. And she's going to uh, lead us the session today. And we're taking ownership, and we've got words for every letter of ownership. And today we're going to say O for obtainable. <laughs> then take it away. Okay. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a starting of a new series. It is our, what, fourth time? Is this our fourth, fourth time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's an adventure. And mm -hmm. I, I think every time I'm learning something new. <laughs> so... Uh, part of the focus for this session is around mindset and mindset with taking more ownership with our health and how that plays into it. And so we're going to focus on different concepts. And the first concept that we're going to focus on is obtainable. So we always start our, our call here with, or our time here with saying your name, saying where you are, and the question for today that we're going to start with is what is a story you liked as a child? So my name is Lynn and I am in Calgary, Alberta. And a story that I liked as a child. Well, the first one that comes up is uh, Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> Only because I remember reading that and, and the pictures that were in the book that was that was being read to me and so but the thing I liked about it was there was I don't know something magical about the whole story and I was really curious around the part where everyone fell asleep for a very long time <laughs> until sort of true love came back in and woke everyone up <laughs> so <laughs> That's kind of what I remember from it. <laughs> so, so that's the story I remember as a child. Madeline? I'm Madeline. I'm in Calgary, Alberta. And a story I remember as a child. Well, I don't, I'm almost positive I was read lots of stories as, as a child. I don't have uh, one from then, but I know one that I used to read to my uh, children that they always really enjoyed uh, was Cinderella. And of course, you know, we always were able to have the TV movie backups for these. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like that when I was little, but the Cinderella story um, and the video was hugely uh, popular in our household. And just, I think the, um, the funny voices that they <laughs> that was part of that video and I don't know it was just that it, the girls were enchanted and we used to um, tease Maya that she had princess hair because she had really long blonde hair and I think it was all this kind of princess influence so I I'm, <laughs> I'm going with that one <laughs> awesome thank you <laughs> Olive <laughs> Uh, my name is Olive and I'm in Saskatoon. Um, the first book that came to mind for me was the Bobsy Twin series. And that's uh, what I read, the first books I remember reading as a little girl. Um, I just, I guess I just like the, the family concept. But just trying to thought in my head that I should seek them out and see if they're still available in libraries. <laughs> the Bobsy <laughs> Twins, I remember. <laughs> I had never heard of that one. Neither. Mm, probably a little bit young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> all right. Lorraine? I'm Lorraine and I'm in rainy, cloudy Osoya, <laughs> British Columbia. <laughs> yes, and I kind of chuckled then when I don't remember reading that book to you. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my, I, the book that came to my mind right away was Henny Penny. 
<laughs> okay, Mom would read this, and it was a bit of a poem. Oh, there was a story to it. And Henny Penny was a hardworking hen, and she would always go out and, and go, gather a lot of grain. And her other little chicks, they, they didn't want to ga grab, gather grain and uh, to eat or save. And, uh, of course, Henny Penny had stored all this grain up. And, of course, when it came to time to eat, she had, was well fed. But the, the other chicks weren't because they didn't stock up on their, they didn't work hard to get their food saved. So <laughs> Henny Penny. <laughs> yes. There was a moral to the story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, that kind of, you know, when you think of all those, all the things that we've talked about just in that opening question kind of play into this concept of things that are obtainable and what obtain, you know, what does it mean to have things be obtainable and, uh, and how does that play into mindset and how our mindset supports us in taking more wellness and ownership for our health, you know, or diving more into that. So what's the first thing that comes up when you think of things that are obtainable, Lorraine? <laughs> well, when I think of obtainable, I think if, we, if you've got a desire to do something and uh, it really maybe appears your first thought, well, I can really do that. And uh, then you try doing it and you're really not that good at it. But at least you had the thought, you had the motivation to try it and you tried it. And uh, it's like uh, obtainable. And what came to my mind is one, when I, we first went full-time RVing and we were still in, in, in Alberta and we went mountain climbing. Remember that, Lynn? You took Randall and I up this mountain and the kids went in through this up there. And we, we've got, climb quite the the elevation and that's of course from the prairies you don't climb mountains so <laughs> it no it, we, i was determined to climb that up those heights so it was obtainable although it was a tough it was a tough haul but <laughs> at least i you know i thought about it you know i went along with it and um, I, I obtained some satisfaction from it and I just remember Carrie taking us back down another route, and we had to double back. And uh, but that, you know, it was a, it was an all day affair. All of them. You don't, you don't, you don't, don't try it. Don't, don't try this at home. And, and and that was that was ten years ago, ten eleven years ago. So at my age of climbing mountains, that was obtainable. <laughs> the desire was there, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I didn't want to be shamed that I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that when you were speaking about just doing something that you hadn't done before or having the desire to do something. Yeah. How about you, Madeline? Um, well, I, I think when I think of obtainable, um, it resonates more in terms of comfortability that taking a leaf out of <laughs> Lorraine's story doing something that you're not comfortable in maybe isn't always as obtainable um so in the realm of obtainable I I think of security I think of more um known factors um and and to reach outside of that desire is the question of whether it's obtainable. So it becomes a little bit more um, wanting to stretch that bubble of attainability as it were. So mm -hmm. I, I think there is something to be said for wanting something to be obtainable, but it almost has to be proven or achieved to call it obtainable. Mm. So it's a, it becomes a challenge, which is right. awesome. Right. Yeah. So there's that comfortability, there's the security, there's something known, mm -hmm. yet there's something, a desire to stretch. Mm -hmm. If that's, if, if that becomes the case, right. and then you can say, I obtained that. I, I, I achieved it. Right. Yeah. 
How about you, Olive? Um, when I thought of that word, I thought of putting things out to the universe and counting on the universe mm. to bring them back to you. Um, if you talk about things and you tell people that this is something you want to do and something you want to achieve, I think there's a better chance of it happening than if you just keep it to yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, cool. <laughs> I like that one. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, when I think of obtainable, I think of something that's achievable, you know, something that I'm, I'm, I'm capable of you know, like little steps, like it's not too far outside my reach, but it's possible. Like mm. I think of possibility, like there, there is a possibility, but, and there's a, there's a good chance of success if it's obtainable. Yeah. So it's interesting because it brings up one of the principles of core alignment and that's well, in one of the practices and, and the concepts is around the levels of learning. I don't know if you're familiar with the levels of learning, but when we're doing something we've never done before, we're often at that first level of learning where we don't know what we don't know. <laughs> and I think that, and then we, you know, as we progress and, and then we realize we know that we don't know. And then we, you know, go at it a little bit and then we know what we don't know. And then it takes a lot of practice, right? And then all of a sudden we've practiced so much and now we we know what we know and we know what we don't know and we become more of a master at, at something. So when I think of, you know, so when we think of taking more ownership for your health and for our wellness and things that are obtainable, um, what comes to mind with, either putting it out to the universe, looking at what's, you know, what's known, what's secure, maybe what's, you know, um, you know, maybe stretching a little bit or doing something we haven't done before or having a, um, you know, it's easy to see what other people are doing and want to do it. So what what's something that's obtainable as you take more ownership for your health? Madeline? Um, first thing that came to mind was uh, moving, getting out and walking and being being uh, active in that way. And um, that is extremely obtainable in terms of it's an easy, easy thing. Sometimes the motivation isn't there if the weather is bad or the walking or the surface of what you're, you know, but you can always go and move even indoors right like you can always go and walk around and 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 I you know it, it's a simple thing but it's definitely obtainable and uh and you know so often we don't get up you know you're stuck look reading or on a laptop or <clears throat> doing something that you don't think is you're worthy you're you should and sometimes you should. <laughs> <laughs> so getting up and moving. <laughs> getting up and moving. Yeah, definitely obtainable. Movement can come in yeah. many forms, right? Many forms. That's right. Yeah. 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 What about you, Olive? Um, so it's kind of sitting in the back of my mind um, and that I'm trying to bring to the forefront is that I want to travel more. Um, and I have to find a way to do that as a single person. I'm a little bit intimidated by that thought. Um, I've had, I haven't had horribly negative experiences traveling. I haven't been like some people were at Christmas time, you know, stuck in Mazatlan and not able to get home. Just, need to be braver about it make more mm. positive Got it. steps so, in that direction. so traveling more and 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 i like what you said it's sort of it's in the back of your mind and it's like 
it's like it's wanting to come forward. It's like, <laughs> it's like oh. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's the first thing is to know what we want, right? Like mm. the first step in doing anything we've never done before is knowing what we want and what we yeah. want it for. Yeah, totally. What about you, Lorraine? <laughs> What's an, uh, attainable for my health? Well, when you think of, yeah. In my health and well-being. I think the fact that it's obtainable to stay healthy, uh, you know, with a uh, different attitude, different foods that you're eating, uh, exercise, of course, but I think, you know, staying hydrated, stay taking things for uh, supplements for your health and keeping your immune system up. And that's obtain obtainable. We don't have to check in and and get all what's out there that people tell you what you should be doing but it's obtainable if you take get your your food and your hydration up and your sleep as long as you've got good sleep that that's obtainable it, breathing good air is obtainable uh, so that's what's i it's very obtainable for me because i've been doing that for years so it's, it's obtainable well, and that plays into this mindset piece because what you're saying is this attitude mm -hmm. and how much that plays into having more health and wellness in our lives or yeah. taking more ownership for our health and how having that healthy attitude <laughs> makes things more obtainable. Yeah, when I think of taking more ownership for my health and my wellness with the things that are obtainable, I think of stretching myself a little bit, like all of us saying, maybe taking something that's in the back of my mind. I know I can do, I've done it before, I've just done it in a different way before, and now I have to do it in a new way. You know, I went, we went, we've been skating once a week since Christmas. I mean, really skating, I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyways, I've done it before, but if I don't do it all the time, it's it's far less attainable. And and um and I have to learn it a new way now because my body, I can do it, but my body definitely has different parameters than it had five years ago or 10 years ago or when I was three years old when I learned how to do it. <laughs> so, uh, however, the tissue memory is there. So, mm -hmm. you know, often I think some of the things we've done in the past, there's a memory, there is a memory of doing it. And that's the first thing that we kind of go with is what have we done in the past? You know, that's the first thing our minds do is go gather information from the past memory bank of, okay, well, I know what it's like to travel. I did it with this way and this way and this way, but now I'm doing it in a new way. And what other information can I bring in that would help me do it in a new way <laughs> and help me do it, you know, um, more within alignment of how my body is now, because my body definitely um, needed to have more rest. I could go out for little bits of time and then I'd have to sit. <laughs> like, I would do three laps and then I'd rest. <laughs> and, then rest. <laughs> and I didn't fall. I didn't want to fall because I know mm. if I fall, that's like a whole, whole gamut right. of however long it takes to recover from a fall. <laughs> so, so, I mean, that really goes to me with looking at things that are obtainable and, and, and taking one of my mentors and teachers, she talks about taking a one degree shift, just really putting it out to the universe, writing down all the things that we'd like, almost like a, like a wish list, and then just giving it up to the, you know, to the universe, and then just taking like a one degree, you know, just one little one, a one degree shift. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. What's a what what is um what is a obtainable one degree shift that you could take towards more wellness in your life and more ownership for your health and the things you want to do? 
Lorraine? <laughs> well, I have uh, seven pound weights sitting on the counter over there. Mm -hmm. And they are seven pounds, so they're heavy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that little shift is going by, picking up these weights and do at least 10 arm things. It's hard to get them up this way because they're seven pounds or pushing them up above your head. But at least you could every day, tiny things, seven pounds. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and they're sitting right there. They're sitting it's right often. there. They were sitting outside and I brought them in just as a reminder. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just adding some movement, even if you just did three. Well, that's right. You know, yeah, yeah. But just taking oh. one with both hands, seven pounds, you know. Yeah. Anything, pick the damn things up. How about you, Madeline? Uh, one degree. Um. Well, I guess one degree for me would be to have one cup of coffee instead of three. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, drinking, sitting, drinking coffee and reading in the morning, but that can get stretched and stretched and stretched. And so, you know, it would be less of a stretch if I just stuck to one cup of coffee and then really started my day. So, yeah, that's a one degree. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, I don't think you should even attempt that one degree. That's <laughs> <laughs> what makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, one degree for me. I think one degree for me in my Quest to do this solo travel thing would be to join uh, a solo travel group and I just read on Facebook the other day that there is a, a company in uh, in Saskatoon that caters to female solo travelers so my, my next step is to to join that group cool cool and that's gathering good information. That's if, if nothing else, you are gathering good information. Well, yeah. yeah. And which is, totally. which is very supportable and, and supportive. Doing, you know, mm -hmm. Other social circle, which is good for your brain health too. Yeah. Awesome. Well, when I think of a one degree shift, uh, what comes to me is I, I'm often stuck in the, I don't know what I want. The, you know, like, I think the biggest problem I can go into is not knowing what I want. I mean, I, I feel very fortunate in life and I have a, I feel grateful of the life I have and my work and how I'm contributing and, and, um, and I don't feel like a, lo a loss at things, you know, it's like, so the one degree shift that I've been taking is just taking time in the morning to just throw out ideas whatever they are even if they're far-fetched <laughs> whatever's coming up and and the and writing every day like actually putting my pen to paper and just getting it out of my head and uh, that's the one degree shift because I think it will help me to actually acknowledge that I do want things because mm -hmm. I do want things I just don't I don't, I don't even entertain them. You know, it's like, they're just sitting in the back of my head. Like, you know, it's like they're way back there going, oh, what the hell? Don't even go there, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah. And, and the one thing I did do today was, you know, when I see others, you know, in posts or whatever, and they're doing something that's really cool. It's like, I'll have that too. That's my one, that's my one degree shift is mm -hmm. I'll have that too. Because you know, if I was on a menu and I was looking for something to eat, I'll have some of that. No, I'll have some of that. <laughs> I might not do it. Like Madeline said, I might, I'm, I feel like I'm just gathering the information, but I've got to be willing to go there. And so that's, that's how, I'm, that's what I think of with things that are obtainable. So 
I think it makes it far more obtain, obtainable to have the universe support us in what we want by having, you know, being at least acknowledging it. <laughs> so, so I think this series will be really fun because it is looking at mindset and it's looking at things that are obtainable and and maybe not having them be too hard, right? Too far over. <laughs> but then again, I'm always just learning from my mistakes, you know, or learning from maybe I bit off too much there or, okay, you know, maybe the mountain was too steep. <laughs> I could have said no, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so. So what will you take with you from this conversation that will support you until we talk again, Lorraine? Well, what I take away from this conversation until next Monday, I think it's been a fun start. We've learned a lot from each other and um, it's lots to kind of contemplate. And uh, I'm very grateful for the camaraderie and the excitement of it all. Yeah, so I'll take it away. Thank you. Natalie? I will take away um, a few good laughs for sure. That's very, it's easy to be light and bubbly with these kind of conversations. And I appreciate that. And, um, and uh, look forward to more. Paula? Uh, I will take away the, uh, the support of the group here and like everyone else has said, look forward to next week. Mm -hmm. Marvel takeaway is, um, hmm, uh, just a lot of excitement over the possibilities of where these conversations can go. <laughs> it's always, I kind of, it's just a great mystery. I kind of pull out a bunch of reference material that I've got from, <laughs> and I never know if I'm going to use it or, but I feel like the universe is supporting me and us and um, they're lighthearted conversations. And I think they expand the possibilities of what's possible for everybody. And it's much lighter. So I, I, I take away that, that sense of possibility. What will you take with you that'll support you for the rest of your life, Madeline? I will take away uh, what will support me uh, for the rest of my life. I will take away the wonderful way of I'll have some of that that you talked about. <laughs> I'll have some of that um, and that and that. And, <laughs> and just in a fun way to be that easy going with it. And it's not a struggle, right? To just have it as possibilities not that like you said you know you don't have to you don't have to go follow through with it but it's it's it feels good to want stuff and I think that's what we're here for truly so yeah I think that's a really fun thing Paula I will take away um writing things down um the things that I want to do the things I want to achieve I think, um, I think writing them down is a good Good plan. Lorraine? Well, what I'll take away for the rest of my life, I think <clears throat> it's just uh, <clears throat> just keep following through on, on your uh, my desires of doing things and, and focusing on the tiny things that are of, of interest. And, uh, and in this past week, I've learned a lot about business and uh, how to do it. And um, uh, it's just been an awesome, awesome journey. And I, I think it's because we, I've open-minded, my mind is open to these things. And uh, I, um, I'm i very excited about, you know, just keep going and having fun with, uh, you know, the things that come in my mind and what I desire to do. Cool. <laughs> uh, what I will take with me <clears throat> that will support me for the rest of my life. Hmm. Well, the sense of community, you know, albeit spread out and mm -hmm. the ease with which we can gather the blessing of that and, um, and how supportive it is. 
and and just that that little shift like it's a stretch for me and to me that's that little bit of a stretch of i'm doing something that's obtainable but it's not necessarily comfortable <laughs> and so perhaps you know sometimes i think it's uh, it's good for me to shoot for something that i know is obtainable but might not be comfortable and it might not feel secure but it's <clears throat> definitely known and it's fun to share. So I look forward to more of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks a lot, Lynn and, <laughs> and Madeline and all of for your input. It's been fun and it's reju rejuvenating. Mm -hmm. 